Hello everyone, do you wish you could afford the mega expensive gold sink mounts in World of Warcraft or do you just want to be able to get that legendary without having to scrabble around to find a couple of hundred gold at short notice? Then do stay tuned because this is going to be the guide for you. There's a lot of information about gold making out there in YouTube and elsewhere but in my experience a lot of it is either very specialised or quite hyperbolic in nature. Yes, it totally is possible to make 300 gold in an hour in World of Warcraft, but it usually requires a combination of extreme luck followed by a lot of hidden effort as you list and relist a mega expensive drop in the auction house for months to come until it finally sells. Making six figure sums generally does require huge effort. For example, you're looking at spending many hours babysitting the auction house or extreme grinding. If you want to get rich super fast, then that level of effort and skill is exactly what you will require to achieve it. But fortunately, if you're happy to be a little bit patient, take a long term view, it is still possible to build up several million gold over the lifetime of an expansion just by taking a little and often approach. I started Shadowlands with about 3.6 million gold and I set myself a goal of reaching 10 million plus enough gold to purchase every mount that was available for gold from an in-game vendor. If you're wondering, that amounts to another 5.5 million gold or thereabouts at that time. And that was a goal I managed to completely smash. For Dragonflight, my goal has been to reach 20 million gold account wide. Today, I currently stand at 18 million gold, having dropped another 1.2 million gold in that new Scarab mount, and probably another 2 million or so buying up mounts that are sold in the in-game auction house. And I've been able to do this by investing an average of 1 hour in gold making every day. So how did I do it? Now I chose to use a three pronged approach to my gold making. Prong number one I call riding the wave. Gold making in World of Warcraft is highly cyclical. At the launch of a new expansion it's incredibly easy to make fairly sizable amounts of gold. For the first couple of weeks most folk are focused on leveling and gearing meaning supply of materials is very limited. At the same time the serious goblins are all leveling up their professions and many of them are willing to pay any price to be the first to max them out. Combine that with nobody really knowing the true value of stuff and you've got a perfect storm where you can make quite a bit of money. And after that first couple of weeks, the economy then goes into very long and slow decline with just occasional and increasingly short-lived spikes around the new major patches in the start of seasons. Now, for those of you who are just getting started, that does mean I have some bad news for you. This is the hardest time to get started making gold in game and it's only going to get harder until the next expansion drops. But I'll come back to that sooner. Prong two is find something I like and do it regularly with as little friction as possible. Now for me, that's double gathering. My favourite bit of World of Warcraft has always been its open world and finding something that can get me out and about in the world is just my cup of tea. Now I will admit, gathering's pretty repetitive and it isn't for everyone, especially now we have Dragon Rising, which means you requires a bit more attention to go around, but there are loads of other options out there. Many professions have simple to craft high demand items, for example, bags for tailoring, alchemy's files and potions, or enchants and gems. Now, while the time investment in crafting is a bit lower, personally, I'm not a fan of having to run back and forth between the auction house and the vendors to get material, but the intricacy of planning out what's most profitable does add a lot of interest for people who are into that. So it's still something that's worth looking into. Now, the big ticket crafting look gear is very higher skill and it requires a much higher investment in risk in gold. It's also in Dragonflight a lot harder to get started because there's no catch up mechanisms for knowledge and skill points in the professions, which means getting fully maxed out at this late in the expansion is still going to take a long time and is probably going to be quite hard and you will face quite a bit of a competition from established sellers. So personally, that big ticket stuff, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend to a beginner at the moment, unless it was something that you wanted to invest in practicing before going into the next expansion. Now, Gathering isn't the only form of farming that's available. You can also farm gear drops from open world or farm pets to sell. Now, these markets are generally a bit more advanced as items sell slowly. And that can be frustration if you're like me and don't have a lot of 
patients and it also requires managing quite large inventories because if you want to always have a steady supply of gold with slow selling items you have to do that by spreading the gold about so yeah certainly for me my, my own recommendations is that the little and often thing it's better looking at things like gathering or very simple high volume items to sell i i personally do find you know just putting stuff in the auction house and having it sell in seconds a lot more satisfying than some of the auction house pvp that you need with the more high value and low volume sort of stuff now prong three is raw gold raw gold is the gold that gets created by the game as you play so this includes direct gold drops from quests gold from vendoring stuff and every expansion does have good raw gold sources it's actually part of how i think the devs offset the loss of gold in game that comes from repairs and us buying stuff from vendors and the like now in Dragonflight, I will say raw gold has required a little bit more effort than some recent expansions, but the world quests are actually surprisingly good, with Dragon Riding Races awarding around 550 gold each, and gold world quests usually around 650 gold, with the odd elite gold quest awarding up to 1k. Now, if you do world quests, you're also going to get regular paragon chests, which include another 1k, and you also get about 1k from the main weekly quests, like Aiden the Court and the monthly ally quests. Another surprise source is the Tusk Tackle Boxes, which can give a decent amount of gold and you can actually use those to boost your farms now i've actually been doing a little bit of monitoring and how much gold i've been getting from world quests the maruk uh, quests that are up i think i think it's about every three days the maruk quests reset and and those weekly quests and i found that in a week i got just over 24k gold so i think that between about 24 to 25k is quite realistic if you do all those world quests every week which is actually you know that's more than enough to keep you going in raid mats repairs and probably enough left over that you'll gradually save up enough for those legendaries so if you don't really need to get like millions of gold but still want to be solvable it's actually a fairly decent uh, option and so there are some pro farmers out there you know that have armies of alts and do multiple world quests across those alts and uh, they can rack up quite a big bit of gold doing that now i'm personally not a fan of that i i just do it in one character but i'm just you know throwing that out there as an option now another element of getting raw gold is to never ever leave gold on the ground. I always loot everything, I vendor all greys, I vendor all soulbound items, and I list everything else in the auction house at least once. Now, the very, again, really pro goblins who are all about min-maxing will often uh, just not loot everything because it's more efficient for them to focus on the big ticket items. But when you're doing little and often, honestly, my advice is, pinch all the pennies and i guarantee you that stuff does mount up over time anyway so here's my broad blush advice find something be it gathering or something else that's easy doesn't require a lot of effort but something that you can keep up every day but most importantly do make sure it's something that you enjoy if you don't find it fun you won't be able to keep it up you'll, you'll just burn out and then yeah, you won't get your gold. And also decide if you prefer doing what I do, which is lots of very short sessions, and I do like a short session every day, or would you perhaps prefer just doing a longer session where maybe one or two times a week you spend two or three hours on it? And once you've decided that, just you know, just go for it. Now, one thing I do want you to be aware of is that the new skill trees for professions in Dragonflight have massively increased the cost to entry for a lot of crafts. In the past, you know, you could usually, by this time in the expansion, max up a profession for by spending maybe 50 to 100k gold in about an hour's effort. But with the new system, you'll very quickly hit this time gating when ranking up skills and a lot of the professions are honestly quite challenging to max out now gathering is a bit of an exception to that but certainly with the profession one the crafting one sorry that's definitely the case and there are no catch-up systems for any of this which does mean that 
Trying to compete with the big goblins in major markets like max level gear is going to be a very uphill and expensive struggle right now. There is a harsh truth in World of Warcraft that in the last couple of expansions there have been massive advantages to being early to market. But all those professions do have easier niches. I've been playing about in an alt with selling just the cheap bags and you know you don't make a lot of gold from each bag individually but they sell very fast and I've actually been able to do that without maxing out my tailoring. I think I'm at 65 tailoring skill and maybe spent about 10 or 20 knowledge points. It's not super lucrative because the margins are low but again even that you know it does fit that slow and steady vibe. Now, it would not be World of Warcraft if we didn't have some tools and add-ons to help with their efforts. So something I do want to dive into now in this video is some of those add-ons. One of the most beneficial tools will be an auction house add-on. The truth is that the auction house interface is built for limited use, like listing one or two items. And as soon as you want to list more than that, it very quickly becomes a pain. Back when I was leveling my first character during Legion, it was around level 65 I started to do the auction house. And very quickly, even from just listing the leveling drops I got, I very quickly got to the point where it was just so painful that I had to find an add-on to help me to do it. These days, the two main options are Auctionator and Trade Skill Master. Now, I personally use Trade Skill Master. To use it to max potential, you need to also use a free desktop app as well. This basically provides the add-on with a lot of pricing information. And I do recommend if you go for TSM that you do have that as well because it's a source of a lot of its powers. Now, TSM does have a reputation for being quite complex and it certainly can be very complex if you want to min-max with it. But it comes out of the box with a lot of default settings, which are actually pretty decent for casual use and you know maybe just with a little bit of effort setting it up to better need your needs can be replayed very quickly in terms of how efficiently you can list your stuff. I personally started to use it well before I started to seriously make goals just because of how convenient I found. Now, I may at some point do a more in-depth guide of how I set up TSM for casual use and how I use its features to set guardrails to help me get not get caught out by some of the auction house PvP that can go on sometimes, albeit I will say with the region-wide auction house, auction house PvP is a lot harder to do now because of how fast the auction house goes. And if that's something of interest to you, do mention it down in the comments below and I'll try and bump that up my schedule for when I include that in these videos. Now, if TSM really isn't for you, Auctionator is actually a pretty decent add-on as well. I've trialed it a couple of times and I found it to be you know perfectly good for helping you to list stuff it's not quite as good in the pricing side because it has to do scans to get pricing data which makes it a bit slower and that definitely does make it less efficient to use as the volume of stuff goes up but if you really are put off by trade master I'd certainly say yep for auctionator instead now, speaking as someone who concentrates on farming and gathering, you're going to find that the rest of the add-ons I'm going to share here are very much focused on just that. First up is Farm HUD. Farm HUD turns the minimap into a large full screen uh, head up display, as you can see in my background recording at the moment, making it easy to see the mining and herbing nodes and other collection stuffs and to really focus into getting to them very quickly. It's not something you'd want to keep on all the time. For normal questing, Mythic Plus and the light, it's a pretty annoying view. But fortunately, FarmHard does make it very easy to toggle on and off when needed. Now, when it comes to open world farming, it can be pretty tough to avoid retracing your steps, getting a bit lost and knowing where to focus in the right areas for your farming. And the next add-on, Roots, is the solution to that. This allows you to draw routes in the map, which can then be followed, as well as manual routes that is also integrated into some other tools out there to get data and gathering nodes. And using that data, it can automatically build routes for you. And that leads into the next add-on, which is GatherMate. 
Gather Mate is a database tool that can track the location of uh, basically any node that you can loot. As you loot a new node, it will record the location and it can optionally show in the map. Now, I personally find the map display far too cluttered for general use or even for use when I'm out gathering, but that map is super useful when it comes to developing and planning routes. But as I already mentioned, uh, that data can also be fed back into the routes add-on and have the routes add-on build a route for you. There's also a companion add-on called GatherMate Data that has pre canned data crowdsourced for the community for a lot of zones which means you can go into an older zone and get farming right away without having to you know spend a lot of time finding the nodes up front my final add-on is called worth it worth it has a wide selection of gathering routes with data and what can on average be gathered if you follow these routes it integrates with data sources like tsm's pricing data to generate accurate estimates for the gold per hour this can be super useful when it comes to deciding where to go and what to farm as auction house values change from day to day this is especially the case in the latter part of an expansion like now where the older content farms can be equal to if not more valuable than the current content farms my one caution with worth it is that sometimes the values can be a little bit optimistic or perhaps that's just i'm not very efficient at gathering i think that might actually be more likely to be honest so it's more useful as a way to compare farms than it is to tell you how much you'll get but if you treat it as a comparison tool it's definitely something that's really really useful now, moving on from add-ons to websites, there are two websites that are ones that I regularly use for my gold making activities. First up is wowprofessions.com. This is a great site if you want a guide for leveling up any profession in any expansion. It also has a bunch of useful farming guides if you don't want to use Wertha or if you want to experiment, get some second opinions. The second website is the Undermine Exchange, which has recently been reprised. This website provides historical and current auction house price info, which can be really useful for some offline researching of markets. And it's definitely one that you want to take a look at when you're planning to take your gold making to the next level. Now, gold making is a massive subject and this video is only scratching the surface of it. If you really want to min-max gold making, there's a lot more you can do. For example, building speed sets for gathering to building huge armies of alts and multiple accounts to allow you to use the auction house more efficiently. Now, that's honestly beyond the scope of an intro guide like this, but I do have one last tip that you might want to put into practice once you get going with gold making and that is to create a banker alt character banker alts are usually low level characters that you park in stormwind or ogrima they can be used to hold on to items hold on to gold or to just be the character you send all your stuff from leveling alts to to be auctioned unless you have an auction house mount in which case you probably haven't honestly learned much from this video or a mage that can put back and forth use an auction house from leveling characters or even just from your mains when they're out and about in the world can be a bit of a pain and yes you don't want to ignore the auction house when leveling i recently leveled a couple of characters in new realms one not using the auction house and the other using the auction house and the difference at level 70 is quite large my no auction household currently has about twelve thousand gold to the name while the auction house one has thirty thousand to the name so basically just by using the auction house to auction all the drops i got while leveling i was able to double the amount of gold i got Anyways, hopefully you found this useful in helping you figure out how to get started with gold making. If you have any tips you'd like to share, do please put them in the comments down below. I'd also be super interested in hearing if there are any other useful tools or add-ons for gold makers out there. As you can tell for this video, this is an area that I'm super casual on and I'm sure there's a ton of stuff I could learn from some of the older hands out there. And if you are new to gold, just keep in mind that despite me being very casual and by no means an expert, in this subject i've still been able to smash through gold cap so trust me it can be done 
Now, if you found this video useful, do hit the like icon to let both me and YouTube know. And if you'd like to be notified when I upload another video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. There will be loads more guides, opinions and reviews coming soon. And all those likes and all those subscriptions have a massive impact on the ability of small channels like myself to grow. So if you want to support the channel as well as watching right to the end as you have, and I do thank you for that, do use those other features. It helps more, far more than you could possibly imagine. But anyways, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.